so much it's, it's been a great night um, what can I say man we, 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 we had to break out myself back down to the bases you know when you become a champion and, and you and you become a champion as long as I've been unifying the division as long as I uh, have defended my title uh, sometimes it, it makes you get lazy at times when when you become a champion for so long, you know, and with this fight, I had to, I had to break myself back down. Of course, it was a lot of animosity, a lot of chaos, a lot of bad blood that was against me and my opponent, and that was the fuel to my fire to, to get myself in, in the best shape that I've ever been. This camp reminded me of when I first won my world title. You know, I had to break myself all the way back down to the basics and. I enjoyed every moment of it. You know, it was many times when my body was sore. Many times when I was in the bed, I was I couldn't get comfortable. You know, and I got a very nice bed at the house. And uh, <laughs> I remember getting upset because you know I needed sleep, but my body wouldn't allow me to because because of the sparring, because of the strength training. You know, all the things that I was doing to prepare myself for this right here. You know, and uh, it takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of dedication to just be a fighter, period. You know, a lot of people don't understand what type of work it takes to, to, to do what we do each and every night on top of risking our lives each and every time in the ring. As I always say, our head is not meant to be hit in the first place. That's why I say you must respect all your fighters, you know, that steps in the ring, no matter, you know, no matter what their, what, what, what type of level they are, you, you, you gotta respect them because, man, we, we pay a price each and every time. You know, there's no money in the world that can amount to our lives or going back to our family. And I know I say a lot of things, and and I mean a lot of things, but, you know, like I said before, I come from the old school of things is that, you know, when you when you got animosity against each other and you guys want to duke it out, what's the best way? What's the best way? The original way is to put these hands up, and sometimes you have to put your hands on somebody, and then what made the best man wins. And after that, you can hug each other, you can love each other, and live to see another day. And, that's the thing we did tonight. You know, we get to live to see our family. I'm here to see so many beautiful people and you know that's here now and um now we move on to the next step. Questions. Before, before, we, have, before, we, before, we, before we have any questions, we also want to introduce Shelly Finkel who is uh Deontay Wilder's co manager, JD's who is his trainer and his co manager as well. So uh, we're going to take questions now for Deontay, but they're also available to answer. Deontay, questions out the mic, guys. Deontay, right. Deontay right. Here first. Darren Smith out of Kansas City. No, hey, hold sir, hold on, sir. Hold on. Questions hold on. into the mic. Deontay, Duncan McKenzie. Deontay, Duncan McKenzie McCarthy from Australia. Yeah. Uh, Deontay, you said before the fight that you weren't going to kill Deontay Wilder. Do you think that's true? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
does this fight really establish where you're at ahead of Joshua, or does it help people compare what level you, you're at and what level Joshua is at? I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. You know, when you're in boxing, we always say styles make fights, and it's so true, you know, certain styles may not complement other styles, and with Brazil style, it complements mine. Any guy that gets in, in the ring and can't move their head or not flexible, you know, it's perfect for me, you know, because I'm gonna set you up, and I'm very, I'm faster than what people think. You know, people think, oh, you just got a right hand, so you stay away from that. You know, but when I settle myself down and really use my intelligence in the ring, magic happens, and tonight I displayed that, you know. Um, <coughs> We can compare all we want, but you know, at the end of the day, when when both of us get in the ring, you know, you don't know what's gonna happen. You know, I can't say you know that I'm gonna knock him out. I can't say he's gonna knock me out. We just have to see when that time comes and see what happens. Yeah, I'm Dave Derrick Smith, Kansas City Fight Sports Radio. Um, you trained obviously hard for this fight. Uh, this is your 40th knockout. Would you say that this knockout hurt around the world kind of puts you? more so on the matter where people know where you're finally getting the respect as a world heavyweight champion. And then also, second part question, is it safe to say that after your performance tonight, this is why Joshua was avoiding you? I mean, this this fight has definitely hurt around the world, you know, and um, I'm finally getting my respect. You know, it, it took a long time, but I'm very patient, you know. Where I came from, I had to be patient, you know. Even from the Olympics, a lot of people don't even know I was a bronze medalist. But even on top of that, how I got the bronze medal, you know, it was 246 guys in there, and I was the 246 guy, least experienced guy. 278. 278. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to, you know, pick myself up. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm happy with all my accomplishments, you know. I'm happy with where I came from and how I started. You know, I started from the love of my, my daughter that was born with spinal bifida, and that was a poster my mother once gave me when I was young, and the poster read, you don't know what you can do until you try, and that word, those words hold dear to my heart to this day, you know. That's why I tell everyone, everyone has greatness in them, because greatness is only determined by service, and if you don't apply your service, you just don't know how great you are, how great you can become, you know. And over time, and I apply my service, and I apply my service each and every time, and you know, and I display greatness when I get, when I step in the ring. And the second part of your question, I, I, I put fear in any man. You know, a lot of people say it's fighters not scared. You know, they get you know, you know they can't be scared. Well, we're human. You know, we're gonna have we're gonna have those tendencies of fear. You know, until we get in the ring, and that's how we overcome our fear. Everyone in this room is scared of something. You know, um, but it comes a time where we must face our fears. With me, no man wants to get humiliated on national TV. And their body drops like that. You know, you just never know what it's gonna do after you get hit from a devastating punch. You know, you can fall on your face, you can ball up, your legs can bend, and you know, you can fall out the ring, many different things, and no one wants that highlight on them because <laughs> the way the internet is set up right now is undefeated. <laughs> and you know, I mean, it's embarrassing to, to get in there, but for me as a warrior, and I see all these other fighters as warriors, I, wouldn't, I would tell them don't hold your head down because you did something with a lot, of, a lot of people in the world. You know, we got, what, billions of people in the world? I don't know the exact number, but um, that would di uh, differentiate them from a lot of people because a lot of people wouldn't get in that ring to just step in there, yet alone talking about taking a punch. So I would tell all my opponents, all fighters, to hold your head up high, you know. If you fail, you know, today, tomorrow is, is a new day, and you can train, and like I said, you can apply your service and be great. But um, I'm a big threat to anybody in the heavyweight division, and each and every time I display that, not only with my words, but with my action as well. Hey, Deontay, congratulations on the win. My question for you is, uh, the next fight for you, it seems it's not going to be Fury because of his new TV contract, but what do you think legitimately could be your next fight? Is it Joshua? Is it a rematch with Ortiz? Is it Konecki that people have talked about? So I'd like to hear from you, and maybe, uh, Shelly, you could address that also. Thank you. For me, 
you know, I don't know what's next, to be honest. You know, there's so many different things going on, you know, there's so many different opinions. I just want the best, I just want the best fights possible. You know, I've tried to prove myself for a very long time, especially here in America. You know, it was, it was dead here, you know, for 10 years. You know, no one even knew who was the heavyweight champion of the world war. And here you come, here I come, this country boy from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, you know, trying to put it back on the map, even from the Olympics and just work my way up. You know, I really started from the, all the way from the bottom when it comes to boxing, all the way from the bottom. I had to work my way up to this point now. So, you know, with that being said, I think that's something that my managers and, and, and my team could ask better than I, because, you know, if we've tried many a times to make the best fights, the great fights happen for the fans. You know, I've lowered my standards, you know, to make these fights happen. You know, I've took high risk with low rewards to make fights happen, you know. I asked because Ortiz was here talking about it. You know, Most definitely. You know, I gave Ortiz that opportunity because he was considered the boogeyman of the division. And people were still said I had to prove myself. And that's why I made that fight. I like, let's make that fight happen. You know, if they said that everyone's scared of him, Let's make it happen. That's what I do, you know what I mean? I'm the type of person that I, I wear my pride on my shoulder. You know, I got a big heart. I'm very determined. I know who I am. I know what I stand for. I know what I represent. And anyone can if anyone want to test me and doubt me of who I am, then I'm willing to prove you wrong. I've had to prove myself to people <laughs> throughout my whole entire life. So this is nothing new to me, you know? I'm the best in the world, and that's what I feel, no matter what opinion it is. And, you know, you would fight him again? Ortiz? Yeah. I'll fight him. You know, uh, I mean, the heavyweight division is very small, you know, so why not have two fights, three fights? You know, all these guys, that's why I don't understand why none of the big fights haven't happened thus far. If you lose, okay, rebuild yourself and get back up. Most of the time in life, many people lose, but they give up. And the great thing about life is people want to see how you, you fall and get back up. It's easy to stay on top. It's easy, it's easy to be a winner and, and, and go around and, 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 and be a winner with no, no losses and, and different things like that. You know, everybody wants to be a winner, but a real winner, a true winner is someone that, that falls from that platform because everyone wants to see how they develop themselves and get back up in life. And that's why I, I don't care about my record, you know what I mean? That's how you become a two-time champion, a three-time champion, a four-time champion. And the heavyweight division, like I said, is very small. So these, we, we, we got to make the big fights happen. You know, if one lose, you can come back. Look at all, most of these challenges, they, they lose so many different times, but how many times they get title fights? Look at Brazil. He lost before, and now he's in another title fight, you know. And we can, the list goes on and on. So I think that's something that Shelly will be you know, to have more insight on than I. Um, first of all, Deontay will fight anyone. And he was willing to fight Joshua for very little comparative to what he was worth. And when someone wants to make a fight, they make it. When we wanted to get um, Fury, we overpaid him. We gave him anything he wanted in order to make the fight. And Deontay is a man who doesn't make excuses. Him and I have discussed when he went into the ring with Ortiz, he didn't talk about it after that. He was sick, he was laid up in bed a couple of days before it. And we said, boy, imagine what it would be if you really went into the ring healthy and trained right. You saw pretty much that tonight. And um, we're, I'm in very close negotiations with John Skipper. I'm gonna see him next week. I'm in constant touch with top rank. All of those fights are gonna happen, whether they happen next or two fights down the line, you will see all of them in the near future, and they'll be on terms that are acceptable to Deontay, not begged by Deontay. So then what is that, the Ortiz? It's not done, it's not done. This coming week, we hope to lock in one of them. One of? Two fights for the next fight. And who are those in the list? I just named them. Oh, those two, okay. There's three guys out there. One of those will be done then, and very shortly after, another one will be locked in for the next one. 
Good afternoon, Valeria Rubino, V Sport. Congratulations. You said this was much more than a boxing match, but then after your victory, there was a lot of animosity. But then you went on and hugged your opponent. What does this say about the sport of boxing and your approach to it? And also, second part of the question is uh, nine title defenses. <coughs> How important, how crucial is patience in this sport, and what does it take to be a long-term champ? Patience is very important in this sport, you know, because I mean, boxing is is, is like the weather; it changes up all the time. You know, even when you think you have something set and strong, the next minute it changes. It changes. I mean, um, that was once upon a time a, 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 a fighter, you know, stepped in the ring, and when the bell said "ding," he got out of there. You know, I'm sure the other opponent was like, man, you messed up my money, you know? <laughs> I've trained so hard for this fight and just to get to this point, we in the ring facing each other and now you're gonna step out. See, those things in boxing, I mean, boxing keep you on your toes, you know? The business side of boxing is, is, is a crazy thing as well. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm very happy with my accomplishments and defending my title for the, for the uh, ninth time, you know, that put me up there with the legends. Um, up in the sport, you know, and I could I want to continue to to set examples I want to be a hard actor father for you know younger guys that are looking up to maybe be like Deontay Wilder You know, what was the first part of your question? Well, I think I show my character, you know, not only outside of the ring, but inside of the ring as well You know, I know I'm a type of person, I always say I'm passionate about what I say, I'm passionate about what I do. And you know, for me, I can, I say some of the darnest things. Sometimes I make up my own words sometimes, you know, you may not even understand sometimes what I say, but that's just my passion that come out. And like I said, I, I've been raised by the, by the old school guys, you know, yeah, if you have animosity, if you have some type of, some type of ill will towards a person, let's fight it out. You know, that's what I come from. Let's fight it out, and once you get finished, you know, if you got the best of me, if I got the best of you, we can hug it out. I mean, it's always tomorrow, and that's what it is. And that just right there, just that's just what I displayed in the ring, you know. We have so much bad blood against each other, but I did what I had to do. All the negative energy I had towards him, everything that was built up inside of me, I had opportunity to release. That's why boxing is very important. It's a, it's a very important sport for me because it gives me the opportunity to release negative energy, even if it has to be on a human being, you know, and I love it. <laughs> 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 so, but, you know, I got a kind heart and I love everyone, you know, I love all people. And, and um, after doing what I did, I just wanted to come over and say, man, it's over with, you know, we got in the ring, we fought it out. It shouldn't be no more animosity against each other. What happened in the past, we're going to keep it in the past, and we're looking forward to a beautiful and bright future. Right here, Deontay. Deontay, Jay Aaron Sebier from FightHype.com. Uh, we've seen plenty of fighters criticize you on, on things that you do in the ring, like actual, actual skill-based thing, professionals, uh, professional trainers that say these things, sit down, I'm sure they're watching tape, and then when they get into the ring with you, whatever they're seeing on tape is not translating over. What is it that they're missing? What is it that they're not, that they can't, um, that doesn't translate? When they get in the ring, it's, it's something different. What exactly is that? What you do you think that is? To, you want me to get them the kryptonite to, 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 <laughs> to defeat me. You know, I'm just one of those special kind of people, you know. I, I feel, in my strong opinion, I'm one of those type of fighters that come around every so many decades, you know. My grandma said I was anointed by God, you know, and those words still stick with me yet to this day. And um, when I was a child, I didn't understand certain things that she would say, you know, because I was a child. So we did as a child, but when I became a grown man, you know, I started realizing, I started understand, I started get, getting in different situations where I'm like, ah, oh, that's what she was talking about. So I'm still learning myself, you know, I'm big on meditation, so that allow me to even come closer with myself. Sometimes I can spend months and months at a, uh, at a time alone with myself just to learn myself, just to understand myself a little bit more. You know, meditation is very powerful and it helps me. And, you know, when I get in the ring, no one can understand who I am, what I am, and, and how I'm able to display 
the talent that I display in the ring, you know. I'm one textbook, I'm one orthodox, I'm a myth buster. Many things that they say about me that I prove them wrong each and every time, you know. True story, you know? many times when I fight guys, I, I, try to, I try to test myself, you know. <coughs> I, I, even before, before this point, I've slacked out for training. I wasn't doing certain things that you would see as a champion would do, you know, because I wanted to test myself. I wanted to see if I'm the chosen one. It is what she's been saying is true. And each and every time, you know, I prove myself right. You know, I prove a lot of people wrong and prove myself right that what she said is actually true. And I think that's a great thing about myself that these trainers, especially the old school trainers, you know, because they have the old mindset of if you do it this way, this is what it takes, you know, because they've seen former champions, you know, accomplish so many things following these rules, but it's a different time and era. You know, we have so many different things, technology, that can take us to the next step, you know, than what they didn't have in the past, you know. And, and for me, you know, I'm just one of a rare kind. I'm a different species. I'm one of my kind. I'm one of one of a kind. One thing, if you take a look and watch the knockout, he timed it so quick. Yes. And boom, it was over. It wasn't like a wild punch. He knew exactly where that right hand was going, and over. You know. And when I watched the replay, I thought there was another punch coming, and no, that was it. <laughs> Deontay Keith Eidick from BoxingScene.com Did you expect this fight to get out of the first round? I mean, I was saying it went, but I'd be surprised if we go past three. I was very de de determined to get Brazil out of there because of the uh, bad blood we had outside of the ring, you know. I trained very hard for this. Like I said, I broke myself back down to when I be first became a champion, you know. and. You know, what can I say, you know, I'm the best, I'm one of the best, you know, and I like to display my talent each and every time I get in there. I like to be a sighting heavyweight, you know, this is what boxing is all about, especially when you're a heavyweight. You know, we feel like we have so many obligations to fulfill, you know, people put so much pressure upon us and, you know, the things I do is natural, you know, I'm very intelligent in the ring, even when others don't even see the beauty inside of me, but it ain't for them to understand. For God, for what God has for me is for me, you know, and I just want to show you guys the greatness that I have. What did he say to you after the fight? Um, he wanted, you know, he wanted to bring his family in with my family, and we just, you know, we just, everything is all about love, man. We're just watching everything, you know. Like I said, my, my heart is pure, you know. Um, it's filled with love, and I want to show that I, I'm just, I'm about what I say, you know. Like I said, I'm, re I'm the realest champion in the business because I believe in myself. I believe in what I say. I believe in what I do. I'm very passionate about that. And I show, my actions show, you know, not only just my words, but my actions show. And I can break myself down and, and say, man, I love you. You see, he loved me. And, you know, man, he wanted to come in and, you know, bring his wife to meet mine and the kids. And we just come together, man. You know, if I see him out, we can shake hands. I mean, we can go out to eat or something like that. And this is what it's all about. And this, that's why I love the sport, you know. It's, it's, it helps so many fighters out, you know. Some fighters, you know, still are stubborn. You know, some fighters, you know, whether they win, lose, or draw, they still have that animosity, which I don't understand because, it's, you know, when you get angry with something, it takes a lot, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, to stay mad at a person, you know. Forgiveness, why, why you can't forgive a person, you know what I mean? I believe in second chances, and I don't want that stress on me, because that's a health problem as well, too. You know, they say it takes, it, 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 it takes more nerve to frown than smile, you know? And I'd rather smile at you than frown at you. Huge listen company. Uh, Deontay, thank you for this spectacular knockout and performance. Now, was that the hardest right hand you ever hit someone with? And if not, then who? <laughs> I mean, this, this, this knockout remind me of was the Spukel, you know. Like I said, when I come to the Barclays Center, I have my most devastating knockouts. And to be honest, I didn't even feel the punch. And that, those are the scariest ones when you don't feel it and you just know it. You know, it's just an instant. I've done this so many times. And, and you know, it's just one, one second you could be gone. I mean, I'm a dangerous guy, you know I mean? My hands are lethal, you know. And, you know, 
I'll let the fans be the judge of which one they feel is the, the hardest of mine because I, you know, I take pride in each and every last knockout that I display. You know, I think that's what makes me one of the top exciting heavyweights in the division thus far. Okay, one more question. Last question. Man. Last question. Hey, Deontay, uh, I've covered you when you had four rounds at the StubHub Center, and now we're in front of New York and you get accents. So that means you're an international star. And what I wanted to ask you was, from ground zero to now, what's been your biggest inspiration as it relates to where you are now? Man, just the sacrifice, you know, the sacrifice that I had to endure. You know, my father always instilled in me and my brother to be hard workers. Nothing is given to you. You have to earn everything. You know, that's a part of why I love being from the South as well, too. Nothing was given to me. You know, I've had to work for everything, you know. I had to, man, it's been crazy for me. But I appreciate how I came up. I appreciate my life. I appreciate the things that have been instilled in me, you know, because I apply that. They say, they say to be wise, you must apply knowledge first to life, and then you become wise. Just because you're old don't make you smart, don't make you wise because you can be an old fool as well. And I like to apply knowledge to life and it allows me to be who I am. And as I get older, that age is beautiful, you know what I mean? That's why I like, how old are you people? I don't want to tell my age, why not? Age is beautiful, you know what I mean? The more and more you, you get older, the more you experience things. And like I said, if you apply knowledge to life, you become wise. And that's what I've done throughout this time, just starting from the bottom. It allows me to see certain things, you know. You know, I can know what's real and what's not, who's fake and who's not, you know, instead of just all of a sudden coming out of the Olympics, being a Olympic sensation, or this guy that everybody thinks is gonna do it. Nobody knew who I were. Even after the Olympics, they still didn't know I still had to build myself up, but I appreciate that because I needed that. And that's what made me who I am, made me be a strong man now to have a mindset that I have. Like I said, my mindset's so big, a spaceship can fit in it. I'm an open-minded person, you know, and I just appreciate it all. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, too. All right. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you, guys.